Welcome back to Racing Post Greyhound TV. Now, hopefully you're all aware of the news that the ban on Greyhound racing in New South Wales has just been overturned, which uh, didn't look very likely for quite some time, but it has happened. I'm sure many people are absolutely delighted. I'm pleased to say Mark Duclos, who is a senior presenter at Sky Racing in Australia. I met him in my time in Melbourne, uh, is uh, on the line now all the way from Australia. It's pretty early in the morning there, so thank you for joining us, Mark. Not a problem at all, Julie. Good to hear from you. Uh, first of all, your reaction to this reversal. I'm guessing you're pretty happy about this. Uh, absolutely delighted. As are thousands of people uh, in New South Wales and also within the Greyhound uh, fraternity right throughout Australia. Many thought it was a, a knee-jerk reaction by a government that had been uh, monstered as probably the best way by animal activists and minority groups uh, in regards to a, a, a Four Corners uh, television program, Expose, which obviously didn't paint the greyhound racing industry in a good light. It painted it at its lowest point. Um, and what they did there was they listened to the minorities, they listened to the animal activists, and the government, uh, after what was an enormous delay in commissioning a special commission of inquiry report, they acted on that. They banned the industry. Uh, and look, I, I must say, uh, for the first week or so, I was pretty worried because there wasn't a lot of public support for the greyhound racing industry. But then people suddenly worked it out that if they could ban an industry such as greyhound racing in New South Wales, an industry that was providing around about $350 million economic benefit to the state government, what else could they ban? And I think that's really when the tide turned. Of course, you know that most of my experience in Australia was in Victoria. And when that program came out, to me, they reacted brilliantly. Is it fair to say New South Wales were perhaps a bit slow off the mark and, and didn't react in, in the way they should have? Absolutely. Both both Victoria and Queensland uh, conducted uh, inquiries and reports into uh, the greyhound racing industry in their respective states. But not only did they uh, do it quickly, they, they also solved it quickly. They put reforms into place very, very smartly and, and they were able to get on with their business. Uh, in Victoria, they, they actually had three independent uh, inquiries or independent reports done about uh, greyhound racing industry and uh, they were given the tick of approval along with, uh, you know, reforms to the, to the industry because when you look at that Four Corners Expose, the two states that really featured the most prominently, surprisingly, were Queensland and Victoria. New South Wales was realistically a big player in that whole program, but we suffered the most. Uh, and as I said, Queensland and Victoria were able to get their reports and inquiries done and dusted within uh, a really relatively short time three to four months. New South Wales, we waited around 15 months for this Special Commission of Inquiry report to be finalised. And then another month after that, Mike Baird, the Premier of New South Wales, announced the ban. Thankfully, it's only been a very... It, it, it may only be three months. It feels like 20 years, Julie. Uh, but thankfully, after three months, we've now got the right decision. It's caused a massive uproar in, in, uh, in New South Wales, in, the, in Australia, for the the government to do a backflip uh, on an issue that he was so defiant about that there was no budging. Greyhound racing in New South Wales was dead and buried. And three months later, we find that we have risen from the grave. Yeah, I spoke to uh, Mick Floyd, who I know you know at Sandown Park uh, yesterday, and uh, he's obviously delighted, but he says this is a lifeline, not a saviour, this ban being overturned. I mean, Surely now there's a lot of work to be done and, and what are they going to do going forward to rectify the issues? Yeah, the New South Wales um, government have put in place an advisory panel which is uh, will be headed up by a former New South Wales Premier uh, by the name of Morris Yammer. Look, I can tell you this. Uh, as in any in industry, as you and I both know, uh, there are people who will always flout the law. Uh, they are an absolute minority. Uh, the good people that are involved in greyhound racing in New South Wales, they realise that this is the last chance. Um, this is our only chance to be able to take this industry forward. And, you know, we're talking about an industry that's uh, been operation in in Australia and in, in throughout New South Wales for nearly 100 years. Uh, and I, you know, I, I'm lucky, like you, Julie, I get to travel the tracks. I speak to so many people. The despair and devastation uh, mm. that I've seen on their faces in the last three months, good, honest people who have never, ever done anything wrong in the greyhound racing industry, wondering what their future is. Uh, those people, they never, ever hurt the industry. It is always a rogue element. It is always a minority element 
who, who make it bad for everyone else. We need to stamp them out. Anyone caught with live baiting offences or animal cruelty will now face an immediate light ban from the racing industry. They'll also face uh, custodial sentences from the police. And, and honestly, in 2016, that's what we need to do. Absolutely. And uh, fingers crossed for you guys. I know there's an awful feeling of uh, regret over there, but fingers crossed now. Uh, the only way is up for Greyhound Racing in Australia. But just finally, I mean, how do you think uh, what has happened over there affects us here in the UK and Ireland? Do you think we've got to learn lessons and, and take note? I think everyone needs to learn lessons that actions that may have happened 20 and 30 years ago are no longer acceptable in today's society. And as I say, we've, we've seen the rise of animal activist parties and uh, parties that, as far as the population and also in government are concerned, that never had a voice. Well, you know, social media, this, this campaign was driven basically on social media uh, by the Animals Australia group, by animal activists. So what we've got to understand is that what happened 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, it cannot happen again in the future. And look, I, I'm in touch with, with trainers every single day of the week Live baiting to me, uh, it doesn't happen. And, and if it does, it happens in, in such a small way. But as I said, we need to make sure that we learn from, you know, the decisions of the past and the actions of the past and take it forward. It is a $3.5 billion industry here in Australia. It is the second biggest racing industry with thoroughbred holes around about 65% of the wagering pie. Greyhound racing uh, has risen in the last 12 years from around 11% to around 22%. It comes off the back of increased product that we're able to televise. Um, but as I say, it is a very popular sport with a younger demographic. Uh, people love to wager on it. We've got big prize money as far as our races are concerned. We have to make sure that we are squeaky clean in everything we do because, as I said, it is now 2016, not 1956. Absolutely, and ditto over here, Mark. It's been great to talk to you, and uh, fingers crossed that uh, everything starts to uh, just take a turn for the better now, and uh, going forward, hopefully, everything will be good, and Greyhound Racing will never face a ban again in Australia. You're certainly right, and let's hope that we can just provide more size of more English and Irish Derby winners. Really. <laughs> we, we you love leave doing us to that. We'll, we'll send you <laughs> some size. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mark. Thanks for your time, and uh, have a great day. My pleasure, Julie.